Section 20 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9, Part 2. For Lent or a Fast Dinner. From To Make Fine Fritters. Dry some of the finest flour well before the fire. Mix it with a quart of new milk not too thick, six or eight eggs, a little nutmeg, a little mace, a little salt, and a quarter of a pint of sack or ale, or a glass of brandy. Beat them well together, then make them pretty thick with pippins, and fry them dry. To make apple fritters. Beat the yolks of eight eggs, the whites of four, well together, and strain them into a pan. Then take a quart of cream, make it as hot as you can bear your finger in it. Then put to it a quarter of a pint of sack, three quarters of a pint of ale, and make a posset of it. When it is cool, put it to your eggs, beating it well together. Then put in nutmeg, ginger, salt, and flour to your liking. Your batter should be pretty thick. Then put in pippins sliced or scraped, and fry them in a good deal of butter quick to make curd fritters having a handful of curds and a handful of flour and ten eggs well beaten and strained some sugar cloves mace and nutmeg beet a little saffron stir all well together and fry them quick and of a fine light brown to make fritters royal take a quart of new milk Put it into a skillet or saucepan, and as the milk boils up, pour in a pint of sack. Let it boil up, then take it off, and let it stand five or six minutes. Then skim off all the curd, and put it into a basin. Beat it up well with six eggs. Season it with nutmeg. Then beat it with a whisk, add flour to make it as thick as batter usually is. Put in some fine sugar and fry them quick. To make skirret fritters. Take a pint of pulp of skirrets, and a spoonful of flour, the yolks of four eggs, sugar and spice, make into a thick batter, and fry them quick. To make white fritters. Having some rice, wash it in five or six several waters, and dry it very well before the fire then beat it in a mortar very fine and sift it through a lawn sieve that it may be very fine you must have at least an ounce of it then put it into a saucepan just wet with milk and when it is well incorporated with it add to it another pint of milk set the whole over a stove or a very slow fire and take care to keep it always moving Put in a little sugar and some candied lemon peel grated. Keep it over the fire till it is almost come to the thickness of a fine paste. Flour a peel, pour it on it, and spread it abroad with a rolling pin. When it is quite cold, cut it into little morsels, taking care they stick not one to the other. Flour your hands and roll up your fritters handsomely and fry them. When you serve them up, pour a little orange flour water over them and sugar these make a pretty side dish or are very pretty to garnish a fine dish with to make syringed fritters take about a pint of water and a bit of butter the bigness of an egg with some lemon peel green if you can get it rasp preserved lemon peel and crisped orange flowers Put all together in a stew pan over the fire, and when boiling, throw in some fine flour. Keep it stirring. Put in, by degrees, more flour till your batter be thick enough. Take it off the fire. Then take an ounce of sweet almonds, four bitter ones, pound them in a mortar, stir in two Naples biscuits crumbled, two eggs beat. Stir all together, and more eggs till your batter be thin enough to be syringed. Fill your syringe. Your batter being hot, syringe your fritters in it, to make it of a true lover's knot, and being well coloured, serve them up for a side dish. At another time, you may rub a sheet of paper with butter, 
over which you may syringe your fritters and make them in what shape you please your butter being hot turn the paper upside down over it and your fritters will easily drop off when fried strew them with sugar and glaze them to make vine leaf fritters take some of the smallest vine leaves you can get and having cut off the great stalks put them in a dish with some french brandy green lemon rasped and some sugar take a good handful of fine flour mixed with white wine or ale let your butter be hot and with a spoon drop in your batter take great care they don't stick one to the other on each fritter lay a leaf fry them quick and strew sugar over them and glaze them with a red hot shovel with all fritters made with milk and eggs you should have beaten cinnamon and sugar in a saucer and either squeeze an orange over it or pour a glass of white wine and so throw sugar all over the dish and they should be fried in a good deal of fat therefore they are best fried in beef dripping or hog's lard when it can be done to make clary fritters take your clary leaves cut off the stalks dip them one by one in a batter made with milk and flour your butter being hot fry them quick this is a pretty heartening dish for a sick or weak person and comfrey leaves do the same way to make apple phrases cut your apples in thick slices and fry them of a fine light brown take them up and lay them to drain keep them as whole as you can and either pare them or let it alone then make a batter as follows take five eggs leaving out two whites beat them up with cream and flour and a little sack make it the thickness of a pancake batter pour in a little melted butter nutmeg and a little sugar let your batter be hot and drop in your fritters and on every one lay a slice of apple and then more batter on them fry them of a fine light brown take them up and strew some double refined sugar all over them to make an almond phrase get a pound of jordan almonds blanched steep them in a pint of sweet cream ten yolks of eggs and four whites take out the almonds and pound them in a mortar fine then mix them again in the cream and eggs put in sugar and grated white bread stir them well together put some fresh butter into the pan let it be hot and pour it in stirring it in the pan till they are of a good thickness and when it is enough turn it into a dish throw sugar over it and serve it up to make pancakes take a quart of milk beat in six or eight eggs leaving half the whites out mix it well till your batter is of a fine thickness you must observe to mix your flour first with a little milk then add the rest by degrees put in two spoonfuls of beaten ginger a glass of brandy a little salt stir all together make your stew pan very clean put in a piece of butter as big as a walnut then pour in a ladle full of batter which will make a pancake moving the pan round that the batter be all over the pan shake the pan and when you think that side is enough toss it if you can't turn it cleverly and when both sides are done lay it in a dish before the fire and so do the rest you must take care they are dry when you send them to table strew a little sugar over them to make fine pancakes take half a pint of cream half a pint of sack the yolks of eighteen eggs beat fine a little salt half a pound of fine sugar a little beaten cinnamon mace and nutmeg then put in as much flour as will run thin over the pan and fry them in fresh butter this sort of pancake will not be crisp but very good a second sort of fine pancakes take a pint of cream and eight eggs well beat a nutmeg grated a little salt half a pound of good dish butter melted 
mix all together with as much flour as will make them into thin batter fry them nice and turn them on the back of a plate a third sort take six new laid eggs well beat mix them with a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of sugar some grated nutmeg and as much flour as will make the batter of a proper thickness fry these fine pancakes in small pans and let your pans be hot you must not put above the bigness of a nutmeg of butter at a time into the pan a fourth sort called a choir of paper take a pint of cream six eggs three spoonfuls of fine flour three of sack one of orange flour water a little sugar and half a nutmeg grated half a pound of melted butter almost cold mingle all well together and butter the pan for the first pancake let them run as thin as possible when they are just coloured they are enough and so do with all the fine pancakes to make rice pancakes take a quart of cream and three spoonfuls of flour of rice set it on a slow fire and keep it stirring till it is thick as pap stir in half a pound of butter a nutmeg grated then pour it out into an earthen pan and when it is cold stir in three or four spoonfuls of flour a little salt some sugar nine eggs well beaten mix all well together and fry them nicely when you have no cream use new milk and one spoonful more of the flour of rice to make a pupton of apples pare some apples take out the cores and put them into a skillet to a quart mugful heaped put in a quarter of a pound of sugar and two spoonfuls of water do them over a slow fire keep them stirring add a little cinnamon when it is quite thick and like marmalade let it stand till cool beat up the yolks of four or five eggs and stir in a handful of grated bread and a quarter of a pound of fresh butter then form it into what shape you please and bake it in a slow oven and then turn it upside down on a plate for a second course to make black caps cut twelve large apples in halves and take out the cores place them on a thin patty pan or mazarine as close together as they can lie with the flat side downwards squeeze a lemon in two spoonfuls of orange flour water and pour over them shred some lemon peel fine and throw over them and grate fine sugar all over set them in a quick oven and half an hour will do them when you send them to table throw fine sugar all over the dish to bake apples whole put your apples into an earthen pan with a few cloves a little lemon peel some coarse sugar a glass of red wine put them into a quick oven and they will take an hour baking to stew pears pare six pears and either quarter them or do them whole they make a pretty dish with one whole the rest cut in quarters and the cores taken out lay them in a deep earthen pot with a few cloves a piece of lemon peel a gill of red wine and a quarter of a pound of fine sugar if the pears are very large they will take half a pound of sugar and half a pint of red wine cover them close with brown paper and bake them till they are enough serve them hot or cold just as you like them and they will be very good with water in the place of wine to stew pears in a saucepan put them into a saucepan with the ingredients as before cover them and do them over a slow fire when they are enough take them off add a pennyworth of cochineal bruised very fine to stew pears purple pare four pears cut them into quarters core them put them into a stew pan with a quarter of a pint of water a quarter of a pound of sugar cover them with a pewter plate then cover the pan with the lid and do them over a slow fire look at them often for fear of melting the plate 
when they are enough and the liquor looks of a fine purple take them off and lay them in your dish with the liquor when cold serve them up for a side dish at a second course or just as you please to stew pippins whole take twelve golden pippins pare them put the parings into a saucepan with water enough to cover them a blade of mace two or three cloves a piece of lemon peel let them simmer till there is just enough to stew the pippins in then strain it and put it into the saucepan again with sugar enough to make it like a syrup then put them in a preserving pan or clean stew pan or large saucepan and pour the syrup over them let there be enough to stew them in when they are enough which you will know by the pippins being soft take them up lay them in a little dish with the syrup when cold serve them up or hot if you choose it a pretty made dish take half a pound of almonds blanched and beat fine with a little rose or orange flower water then take a quart of sweet thick cream and boil it with a piece of cinnamon and mace sweeten it with sugar to your palate and mix it with your almonds stir it well together and strain it through a sieve let your cream cool and thicken it with the yolks of six eggs then garnish a deep dish and lay paste at the bottom then put in shred artichoke bottoms being first boiled upon that a little melted butter shred citron and candied orange so do till your dish is near full then pour in your cream and bake it without a lid when it is baked scrape sugar over it and serve it up hot half an hour will bake it to make kickshaws make puff paste roll it thin and if you have any moulds work it upon them make them up with preserved pippins you may fill some with gooseberries some with raspberries or what you please then close them up and either bake or fry them throw grated sugar over them and serve them up pan perdu or cream toasts having two french rolls cut them into slices as thick as your finger crumb and crust together lay them on a dish put to them a pint of cream and half a pint of milk strew them over with beaten cinnamon and sugar turn them frequently till they are tender but take care not to break them then take them from the cream with the slice break four or five eggs turn your slices of bread in the eggs and fry them in clarified butter make them of a good brown colour but not black scrape a little sugar over them they may be served for a second course dish but are fittest for supper salamagundi for a middle dish at supper in the top plate in the middle which should stand higher than the rest take a fine pickled herring bone it take off the head and mince the rest fine in the other plates round put the following things in one pare a cucumber and cut it very thin in another apples pared and cut small in another an onion peeled and cut small in another two hard eggs chopped small the whites in one and the yolks in another pickled gherkins in another cut small in another celery cut small in another pickled red cabbage chopped fine take some watercresses clean washed and picked stick them all about and between every plate or saucer and throw nasturtium flowers about the cresses you must have oil and vinegar and lemon to eat with it if it is prettily set out it will make a pretty figure in the middle of the table or you may lay them in heaps in a dish if you have not all these ingredients set out your plates or saucers with just what you fancy and in the room of a pickled herring you may mince anchovies to make a tansy take ten eggs break them into a pan put to them a little salt beat them very well then put to them eight ounces of loaf sugar beat fine and a pint of the juice of spinach and a little juice of tansy 
mix them well together and strain it into a quart of cream then grate in eight ounces of naples biscuit or white bread a nutmeg grated a quarter of a pound of jordan almonds beat in a mortar with a little juice of tansy to your taste mix these all together put it into a stew pan with a piece of butter as large as a pippin set it over a slow charcoal fire keep it stirring till it is hardened very well then butter a dish very well put in your tansy bake it and when it is enough turn it out on a pie plate squeeze the juice of an orange over it and throw sugar all over garnish with orange cut into quarters and sweetmeats cut into long bits and lay all over its side another way take a pint of cream and half a pint of blanched almonds beat fine with rose and orange flower water stir them together over a slow fire when it boils take it off and let it stand till cold then beat in ten eggs grate in a small nutmeg four naples biscuits a little grated bread sweeten to your taste and if you think it is too thick put in some more cream the juice of spinach to make it green stir it well together and either fry it or bake it if you do fry it do one side first and then with a dish turn the other to make a hedgehog take two pounds of sweet almonds blanched beat them well in a mortar with a little canary and orange flower water to keep them from oiling make them into a stiff paste then beat in the yolks of twelve eggs leave out five of the whites put to it a pint of cream sweeten it with sugar put in half a pound of sweet butter melted set it on a furnace or slow fire and keep continually stirring till it is stiff enough to be made into the form of a hedgehog then stick it full of blanched almond slit and stuck up like the bristles of a hedgehog then put it into a dish take a pint of cream and the yolks of four eggs beat up and mix with the cream sweeten to your palate and keep them stirring over a slow fire all the time till it is hot then pour it into your dish round the hedgehog let it stand till it is cold and serve it up or you may make a fine hartshorn jelly and pour into the dish which will look very pretty you may eat wine and sugar with it or eat it without or cold cream sweetened with a glass of white wine in it and the juice of a seville orange and pour it into the dish it will be pretty for a change this is a pretty side dish at a second course or in the middle for supper or in a grand dessert plump two currants for the eyes or make it thus for change take two pounds of sweet almonds blanched twelve bitter ones beat them in a marble mortar well together with canary and orange flower water two spoonfuls of the tincture of saffron two spoonfuls of the juice of sorrel beat them into a fine paste put in half a pound of melted butter mix it up well a little nutmeg and beaten mace an ounce of citron an ounce of orange peel both cut fine mix them in the yolks of twelve eggs and half the whites beat up and mixed in half a pint of cream half a pint of double refined sugar and work it up all together if it is not stiff enough to make up into the form you would have it you must have a mould for it butter it well then put in your ingredients and bake it the mould must be made in such a manner as to have the head peeping out when it comes out of the oven have ready some almonds blanched and slit and boiled up in sugar till brown stick it all over with the almonds and for sauce have red wine and sugar made hot and the juice of an orange send it hot to table for a first course you may leave out the saffron and sorrel and make it up like chickens or any other shape you please or alter the sauce to your fancy butter sugar and white wine is a pretty sauce for either baked or boiled and you may make the sauce of what colour you please 
or put it into a mould with half a pound of currants added to it and boil it for a pudding you may use cochineal in the room of saffron the following liquor you may make to mix with your sauces beat an ounce of cochineal very fine put in a pint of water in a skillet and a quarter of an ounce of rock alum boil it till the goodness is out strain it into a phial with an ounce of fine sugar and it will keep six months to make pretty almond puddings take a pound and a half of blanched almonds beat them fine with a little rose water a pound of grated bread a pound and a quarter of fine sugar a quarter of an ounce of cinnamon and a large nutmeg beat fine half a pound of melted butter mixed with the yolks of eggs and four whites beat fine a pint of sack a pint and a half of cream some rose or orange flower water boil the cream and tie a little bag of saffron and dip in the cream to colour it first beat your eggs very well and mix with your batter beat it up then the spice then the almonds then the rose water and wine by degrees beating it all the time then the sugar and then the cream by degrees keeping it stirring and a quarter of a pound of vermicelli stir all together and have some hog's guts nice and clean fill them only half full and as you put in the ingredients here and there put in a bit of citron tie both ends of the gut tight and boil them about a quarter of an hour you may add currants for change to make fried toasts take a penny loaf cut it into slices a quarter of an inch thick roundways toast them and then take a pint of cream and three eggs half a pint of sack some nutmeg and sweeten it to your taste steep the toast in it for three or four hours then have ready some butter hot in a pan put in the toasts and fry them brown lay them in a dish melt a little butter and then mix what is left if none put in some wine and sugar and pour over them they make a pretty plate or side dish for supper to stew a brace of carp scrape them very clean then gut them wash them and the rows in a pint of good stale beer to preserve all the blood and boil the carp with a little salt in the water in the meantime strain the beer and put it into a saucepan with a pint of red wine two or three blades of mace some whole pepper black and white an onion stuck with cloves half a nutmeg bruised a bundle of sweet herbs a piece of lemon peel as big as a sixpence an anchovy a little piece of horseradish let these boil together softly for a quarter of an hour covered close then strain it and add to it half the hard roe beat to pieces two or three spoonfuls of ketchup a quarter of a pound of fresh butter and a spoonful of mushroom pickle let it boil and keep stirring it till the sauce is thick and enough if it wants any salt you must put some in then take the rest of the roe and beat it up with the yolk of an egg some nutmeg and a little lemon peel cut small fry them in fresh butter in little cakes and some pieces of bread cut three corner ways and fried brown when the carp are enough take them up pour your sauce over them lay the cakes round the dish with horseradish scraped fine and fried parsley the rest lay on the carp and stick the bread about them and lay round them then sliced lemon notched and lay round the dish and two or three pieces on the carp send them to table hot if you would have your sauce white put in good fish broth instead of beer and white wine in the room of red wine make your broth with any sort of fresh fish you have and season it as you do gravy to fry carp first scale and gut them wash them clean lay them in a cloth to dry then flour them and fry them of a fine light brown fry some toast cut three corner ways and the rose when your fish is done lay them on a coarse cloth to drain let your sauce be butter and anchovy with the juice of lemon lay your carp in the dish 
the rows on each side and garnish with the fried toast and lemon to bake a carp scale wash and clean a brace of carp very well take an earthen pan deep enough to lie cleverly in butter the pan a little lay in your carp season with mace cloves nutmeg and black and white pepper a bundle of sweet herbs an onion and anchovy pour in a bottle of white wine cover it close and let them bake an hour in a hot oven if large if small a less time will do them when they are enough carefully take them up and lay them in a dish set it over hot water to keep it hot and cover it close then pour all the liquor they were baked in into a saucepan let it boil a minute or two then strain it and add half a pound of butter rolled in flour let it boil keep stirring it squeeze in the juice of half a lemon and put in what salt you want pour the sauce over the fish lay the rose round and garnish with lemon observe to skim all the fat off the liquor to fry tench slime your tenches slit the skin along the backs and with the point of your knife raise it up from the bone then cut the skin across at the head and tail then strip it off and take out the bone then take another tench or a carp and mince the flesh small with mushrooms sives and parsley season them with salt pepper beaten mace nutmeg and a few savoury herbs minced small mingle all these well together then pound them in a mortar with crumbs of bread as much as two eggs soaked in cream the yolks of three or four eggs and a piece of butter when these have been well pounded stuff the tenches with this sauce take clarified butter put it into a pan set it over the fire and when it is hot flour your tenches and put them into the pan one by one and fry them brown then take them up lay them in a coarse cloth before the fire to keep hot in the meantime pour all the grease and fat out of the pan put in a quarter of a pound of butter shake some flour all over the pan keep stirring with a spoon till the butter is a little brown then pour in half a pint of white wine stir it together pour in half a pint of boiling water an onion stuck with cloves a bundle of sweet herbs and two blades of mace cover them close and let them stew as softly as you can for a quarter of an hour then strain off the liquor put it into the pan again add two spoonfuls of ketchup have ready an ounce of truffles or morels boiled in half a pint of water tender pour in truffles water and all into the pan a few mushrooms and either half a pint of oysters clean washed in their own liquor and the liquor and all put into the pan or some crawfish but then you must put in the tails and after clean picking them boil them in half a pint of water then strain the liquor and put into the sauce or take some fish melts and toss up in your sauce all this is just as you fancy when you find your sauce is very good put your tench into the pan make them quite hot then lay them into your dish and pour the sauce over them garnish with lemon or you may for a change put in half a pint of stale beer instead of water you may dress tench just as you do carp to roast a cod's head wash it very clean and score it with a knife strew a little salt on it and lay it in a stew pan before the fire with something behind it that the fire may roast it all the water that comes from it the first half hour throw away then throw on it a little nutmeg cloves and mace beat fine and salt flour it and baste it with butter when that has lain some time turn and season it and baste the other side the same turn it often then baste it with butter and crumbs of bread if it is a large head it will take four or five hours baking have ready some melted butter with an anchovy some of the liver of the fish 
boiled and bruised fine mix it well with the butter and two yolks of eggs beat fine and mixed with the butter then strain them through a sieve and put them into the saucepan again with a few shrimps or pickled cockles two spoonfuls of red wine and the juice of a lemon pour it into the pan the head was roasted in and stir it all together pour it into the saucepan keep it stirring and let it boil pour it into a basin garnish the head with fried fish lemon and scraped horseradish if you have a large tin oven it will do better to boil a cod's head set a fish kettle on the fire with water enough to boil it a good handful of salt a pint of vinegar a bundle of sweet herbs and a piece of horseradish let it boil a quarter of an hour then put in the head and when you are sure it is enough lift up the fish plate with the fish on it set it across the kettle to drain then lay it in your dish and lay the liver on one side garnish with lemon and horseradish scraped melt some butter with a little of the fish liquor an anchovy oysters or shrimps or just what you fancy to stew cod cut your cod into slices an inch thick lay them in the bottom of a large stew pan season them with nutmeg beaten pepper and salt a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion half a pint of white wine and a quarter of a pint of water cover it close and let it simmer softly for five or six minutes then squeeze in the juice of a lemon put in a few oysters and the liquor strained a piece of butter as big as an egg rolled in flour and a blade or two of mace cover it close and let it stew softly shaking the pan often when it is enough take out the sweet herbs and onion and dish it up pour the sauce over it and garnish with lemon to fricassee cod get the sounds blanch them then make them very clean and cut them into little pieces if they be dried sounds you must first boil them tender get some of the roes blanch them and wash them clean cut them into round pieces about an inch thick with some of the livers an equal quantity of each to make a handsome dish and a piece of cod about one pound in the middle put them into a stew pan season them with a little beaten mace grated nutmeg and salt a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a quarter of a pint of fish broth or boiling water cover them close and let them stew a few minutes then put in half a pint of red wine a few oysters with the liquor strained a piece of butter rolled in flour shake the pan round and let them stew softly till they are enough take out the sweet herbs and onion and dish it up garnish with lemon or you may do them white thus instead of red wine add white and a quarter of a pint of cream to bake a cod's head butter the pan you intend to bake it in make your head very clean lay it in the pan put in a bundle of sweet herbs an onion stuck with cloves three or four blades of mace half a large spoonful of black and white pepper a nutmeg bruised a quart of water a little piece of lemon peel and a little piece of horseradish flour your head grate a little nutmeg over it stick pieces of butter all over it and throw raspings all over that send it to the oven to bake when it is enough take it out of that dish and lay it carefully into the dish you intend to serve it up in set the dish over boiling water and cover it with a cover to keep it hot in the meantime be quick pour all the liquor out of the dish it was baked in into a saucepan set it on the fire to boil three or four minutes then strain it and put to it a gill of red wine two spoonfuls of ketchup a pint of shrimps half a pint of oysters or mussels liquor and all but first strain it a spoonful of mushroom pickle a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour stir it all together till it is thick and boils then pour it into the dish 
have ready some toast cut three corner ways and fried crisp stick pieces about the head and mouth and lay the rest round the head garnish with lemon notched scraped horseradish and parsley crisped in a plate before the fire lay one slice of lemon on the head and serve it up hot End of section 20